Hey guys, on this episode, I'm going to be making honeycomb pandan cake, also known as bun ball, no? Hey guys, welcome to Lady Cooks. Today, I'm going to be making um, a very easy and simple cake. It's called Ban Ba Nung, which is also known as uh, Honeycomb Pandan Cake. Um, it just seems like there's so many um, different instructions on how to make this cake. Some are very complicated, some are very simple. Mine's very simple. Um, and I guarantee you, when the results come out, you will get the honeycomb texture that everybody tries to strive for. Um, I've seen posts where people have made it and the cake came out looking like an Alice in Wonderland hat. People have made it where it didn't even rise in the pan at all. So I'm not sure exactly what went on there, but I'm gonna show you my way. And um, it's fail proof. I pretty much have done this ever since I started learning how to make pandan. I have tried the complicated way, I tried the easy way, um, and I come to find out I even experimented with what I have and have thrown it all together, mixed it in my KitchenAid mixer, and it still turned out to be fine. So don't make it too hard on yourself. Um, the ingredients that I am using are, I'm gonna be making two cakes today because we're going to a dinner party. So uh, it's a lot more than what it should be. But the normal recipe calls for eight room temperature eggs. I have tried this where it came straight out of the refrigerator. I just noticed that you don't get a lot of um, honeycomb texture. So room temperature eggs is a must. So there's eight eggs. I have here one stick of butter. This is optional. It's just because I like my uh, bun bò nung to be a little bit uh, on the buttery side, so I, I'm gonna do one stick of melted salted butter. You're gonna do one can of coconut milk, and coconut cream is also a good option, but it does make your uh, cake a little thicker. And this is the brand I use. It's upside down because this is how I opened it. Um, you're gonna need sugar, two cups of white sugar. I also am going to add some vanilla extract just to give a little bit more flavor. And then here is my pandan that I'm going to add into my mixture. A little goes a long way, so you don't really need too much of this. I'm going to add about two teaspoons of this. And then I also have the also baking powder. Um, you have this or the Ortecker brand. This seem to work really well and for one cake I'm going to be using two packages and this you can find at your local Asian store uh, I've seen some people come up with their own baking powder and if you are that awesome then that's fine too but also has it all in here for you I'm also going to use two packs of vanilla sugar this I also got at the Asian store in the baking section next to the also I'm going to add a little bit of salt, not much, just a little pinch of salt into my mixture just so that um, it will cut a little bit of that sweetness out. And then we are going to use one bag of tapioca flour. You can also use the starch, just pretty much the same thing. It comes out the same. Um, my store didn't have the starch, so I bought the tapioca flour, so you need one package of this. Also, you can use any bunt pan you like. You can use a normal cake pan. This just makes everything a little bit prettier. I did already grease this with a uh, normal vegetable oil. And because I melted the butter, I used that uh, leftover on my butter wrapper and just went ahead and coated the pan a little bit more. You don't have to do it, but it is optional. All right, and the better coated this is, the better the cake will come out for you and nothing will stick to the pan and the cake will look nice and brown and pretty. I also have three bowls here. And the reason why is because I'm gonna put one, of my, one for my wet ingredients, the other one's for my dry ingredients. And then whenever I <clears throat> let it sit for a little bit and I'm going to uh, put it through a a strainer just to get all the clumps and lumps out you're going to need that third bowl for the mixture to sit in and when that's done we're going to pour it into our bunt, pa bunt pan and then we're going to bake it in the oven at 350 for 45 minutes and then when that's done you just take it out let it sit and cool for a little bit and then just turn it over and then once it's nice and cool you can start cutting through it and you'll see all your honeycomb texture ready 
Very good. Okay. Uh, you ready? Ready. Okay. Continuous shot. All right. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to crack my eggs, and I'm gonna put the eggs. My wet ingredients. Let's see. And put wet ingredients in here. And make sure you wash your hands real well before you do this. I have already washed my hands with warm soap and water. Good hygiene is always important when you're cooking. And the secret to this also is you're going to have to mix your eggs real slow. We don't want to overbeat these eggs because the better these eggs stay thick and not so runny, the better your honeycomb te texture is going to come out. But again, my way is really simple so you'll see and you'll still get the beautiful honeycomb texture that you want so we already have five six eggs seven i've never tried it with any less than eight eggs i'm not sure how that would turn out but maybe one day i'll try you know six to seven eggs and see how that works but eight has always been the the number for these for this cake so I have eight eggs here all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pour my coconut mixture into the bowl with my eggs and then I'm gonna add my vanilla which is not even open do you have enough time on that camera yeah, but if you uh, want to make it a, a live deal, you're going to have to speed it up. Okay, well, good. I'm going to add one teaspoon oops, of vanilla. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to do two teaspoons of the pandan extract. One, two. You're going to have to cut that part out. All right, so here I am. I'm going to um, slowly whisk this. When you whisk it, you're going to have to whisk it like on one side only, one going one way only. Don't do this and then don't do that. Our goal here is to break these yolks, but not to overmix them. And then whenever we pour it through a strainer, you're gonna kinda end up mixing this mixture again. So I sometimes don't beat this too much. Again, you can see I'm not beating this. I'm just kinda like breaking my yolk and then turning it. All right, so that to me is good for the wet mixture. Now I'm gonna move on to the dry. So for the dry mixture, I'm going to add my tapioca flour. This gets kinda messy, so I try to do it over a bag or something. All right, so we're gonna pour all of our dry mixture in here. Again, I'm making two cakes, but right now I'm just doing one so I can show you guys how to do it. And then we're gonna add two bags of also. Two bags of the vanilla powder, vanilla sugar. Okay, and then we're gonna add two cups of white sugar. I know it sounds a lot, but this stuff has to have it. Okay, there's half a cup. I'm not precisely measuring out two cups, but as long as there's about two cups of sugar in this, I think we're good because 
that vanilla sugar package is going to be sweet enough. Okay, so I just added two cups in there. And then I'm going to do a pinch of salt into a mixture. So I'm just going to do a pinch. Okay. And then we're going to whisk this to mix it up real good. Should have put the wet in here. Darn. Okay. So now we're just gonna pour. Normally I would put my dry into the wet, but since my bowl is so small over here, I am going to pour this inside. Like again, I don't think it matters. You can literally just dump all this in a bowl and it's still gonna turn out good. So we'll see. All right. So we are going to mix this going one way again, just to make sure we get everything nice and wet. Again, don't over mix it. Just mix it enough where you can get everything all incorporated. Got a nice green color here too. batter will be lumpy which is okay you don't want to over mix this because this is why we're going to pour it through a strainer and then it's going to be in nice and uh not you know it's not going to be lumpy once we pour it through a strainer and that's the purpose of it but you definitely don't want to over mix it and then you don't want to like just put this straight into your baking pan and bake because it's not going to come out right so we do want to pour this through a strainer no matter what you do all right, so I think I got my mixture all incorporated, flour and everything's nicely blended in and wet. So what I'm gonna do is now is put it through a strainer. And then once we do that, we're gonna let it sit for about a good 20 minutes before we pour it into our baking pan. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my wet mixture. As you can still see, you, there's like yolk still present. And so what I'm gonna do is pour it through a strainer now into my clean bowl. And this is how we're gonna strain all the lumps and bumps out. So you can see all the lumps and bumps in there still. Let me see. This is a very important step. Do not skip the straining part. And you have to use like a very fine uh, mesh strainer, a colander will not do. So this is something I purchased at Ross for like four bucks. And as you can see, I'm still mixing just because I want to get it through the um, bowl. Still going one way. See, as it's dripping, it's becoming nice and smooth at the bottom. This process does take a bit. As you can see, the batter is still ooey and gooey, and that's what we want. Okay, almost done. This cake is delicious, you guys. It's really simple to make, just a few ingredients. And it turns out nice and beautiful when you're done. Almost done. And the whole point of letting it sit and rest before we pour it into our baking pan, or you can even pour it into your baking pan and just let it rest for 20 minutes before you actually put it in the oven. And the reason why is because, you know, because of the mixing, we want it to rise a bit before we throw it into the hot oven. So that is the whole point of letting it rest, is to let it rise. All right, we are almost done. Nice 
nice and smooth. So like I said, when you're mixing it, don't worry about the lumps at the beginning because eventually this strainer takes all the lumps out and see how smooth everything is? Yeah. That's why you don't want to over mix it because we're going to pour it through a strainer anyways. Okay. And I think we're good. Let's see. Kind of looks like slime. Huh? Okay. What is going on with me today? <laughs> uh, I'm pregnant, so this is what happens baking while pregnant. Pregnant brains are going on. All right, so we're going to take this bowl and we're going to pour it into our bunt pan. There you go. See how nice and smooth it is? Look at that pretty green color. Oh, yeah. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna need my spatula so I can scoop all this out. Let me get my spatula. Spatula. I'm gonna scoop all of it out. So we, the more batter we get in there, the bigger the cake will be. All right. Okay. All right. And then, so we're gonna let that rest. Me meanwhile, this is where I add my butter, and this this is one stick of butter. So I'm gonna pour half of it into my this batter here. And there's no magical way to pour. I just pour just like that. All right. Now I'm gonna leave the other half for my other cake. Okay. So here, you guys. This is what we have. We are going to let this rest for 20 minutes before we put it in the oven at 350. And then um, it's going to go bake 45 minutes. There it is. Okay. So we're going to leave it, let it rest. And then I'm going to start on my second one. And then once I am done, I'm going to cut through it and show you guys the beautiful honeycomb texture that will eventually come out of this cake. So 45 minutes have gone by. I just turned off my oven and what i'm going to do now is um i'm going to leave my oven door a little bit open that way the cake was still cooked without the oven being on at 350 but it'll still be cooking with the heat that's left over and the reason why for that is the top as you can see is still a little bubbly on the inside or so and so i'm gonna let it cook all the way through and before i take it out of the oven and let it cool so as you can see, we got a nice brown looking shape there. And when you turn it upside down, the mold of the pan is gonna make it look nice and pretty. And then I'll cut a slice and let you see the honeycomb texture. All right, you guys, so the cake is done. I'm gonna take it out of the oven now. Come on closer, cameraman. The cake's done, here it is. I'm gonna set it on top of my oven and we're going to let it cool down. And then once that's nice and cool, we can go ahead and flip it over on a plate. And then I'll cut inside the piece and show you guys what it looks like. Here it is. Um, as you can see, we have a nice green color from the pandan extract. And then as you can see, I greased my pan so good that the corners of the uh, cake is already pulling away from it which is good because I won't have to fight with it when I flip it over one time I didn't grease it well and then when I flipped it over it wouldn't come out it was stuck so I had to get a knife and carve around this and bang it a few times for it to pop out and then when it did pop out um, the top wasn't as pretty it was kind of rough looking because some of the uh, top part stayed in the pan but it'll be okay so just make sure you grease your pan really well and um, it will just fall right out of the pan Try this. Wow, they really stuck on there. There you go. See, I, with me even greasing my pan, it still had this little area stuck in here. So 
you know, make sure you over grease it because I thought I did and it didn't have a smooth top like I like for it to be, but that's okay because I'm gonna cut it up anyways. And uh, let's look at the inside. All right. Okay. So basically, this is called pandan bun bonum and honeycomb texture cake. And what you're looking for in this cake is that honeycomb texture. As you guys can see, you saw how I mixed it. And look at that. There is our honeycomb texture. This is what you, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. It still tastes the same. But the whole point of this cake is to have that honeycomb texture. You saw exactly how I mixed it, how I put all my ingredients in, and you just mix it real slow, and there's that beautiful honeycomb texture that everybody tries to strive for. Um, the only thing that I'm not too happy about is this part. Normally, it comes out real nice and brown and smooth, but that's okay. Sometimes it does happen if you do butter, and so if you don't do butter, it might come out a little smoother. But anyways, this is the outcome of our cake, guys. It's nice and chewy and gooey. See how, look at that. It's beautiful. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, let me know how yours turn out. And be sure to stay tuned for more videos like this. And uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. It's so chewy and gooey and just yummy. Full of yumminess. Mmm. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you guys. Have a great day.